In Iran, rights groups say security forces have killed a dozen people in the last 24 hours in a crackdown on demonstrators in Kurdish-populated regions. Activists say five people were killed when police opened fire on protesters in the western town of Javanrud. Now, Kurdish regions have been a focus of anti-government protests since the death of Kurdish-Iranian woman Masa Amini in the custody of the morality police last September. Despite the intensifying crackdown, though, the protests show no sign of abating. A new study by the Tony Blair Institute for Global Change shows strong and consistent support for regime change in Iran. And to hear more about its findings, I spoke to Kasra Arabi earlier, who's the Iran program lead at the Institute. Sure. So the new study, the polls in our new study, was conducted uh, by the Group for Analyzing and Measuring Attitudes in Iran, GAMON. Uh, they use encrypted services uh, in their polling methodology that enables Iranians inside Iran to answer freely uh, without fear of consequence uh, for their lives. Now, the polls were conducted in um, 2020 and again in early 2022. And they, as you said, overwhelmingly show uh, support for regime change. Uh, and this really underscores that what we're seeing on the streets of Iran is not a flash in the pan moment. It's not a random uh, occurrence. It's been clear for years that the Iranian people uh, want regime change. But unfortunately, the West was completely blindsided to this by exclusively focusing on the 2015 nuclear agreement. If I could just ask you, I believe the findings of the poll suggest that fully 70% of Iranian men say they are opposed to mandatory hijabs. Were you surprised by that? Uh, quite, quite. If I, the honest answer is no, I'm not surprised by that. Uh, for, for those of us who have been studying uh, Iran for, for years uh, and have been to Iran and uh, have uh, been frequently engaging with the people of Iran, this isn't surprising. Uh, Despite living under a theocratic, hardline Islamist regime, the Iranian people are the most secular in the Middle East. Uh, and the, the numbers the numbers should suggest that. Um, look, only 26% of urban Iranians say they pray five times a day. Similarly, only 33% of Iranians say they, of rural Iranians say they follow the Islamic prescription. Iran's society has undergone unprecedented secularization. And since 2017, it's been clear that the Iranian people want regime change. And look, 70% of men are opposed to the compulsory hijab. 74% of women are opposed to the compulsory hijab. And this is the significant point. 84% of those who are against the compulsory hijab also want regime change. That's what we're seeing on the streets of Iran today. People are de demanding the downfall of the Islamic Republic in its entirety. This isn't about reform. This is about the downfall of Khamenei's regime. So, so would you say that Iranian society has essentially reached a tipping point? Yes, and it's been clear, as I said, for years now, uh, at least since 2017, that the Iranian people want to get rid of this regime. Uh, let's not forget the bloodiest crackdown on, on civilians took place under the presidency of so-called reformist uh, Hassan Rouhani and his, for, and his foreign minister Javad Zarif. Uh, mm -hmm. They facilitated the biggest bloodshed on the Iranian streets in November 2019. The idea that the Islamic Republic can be reformed was false. It's a lie. The past 30 years have shown that. And the Iranian people have had enough. Uh, they are calling for the downfall of the Islamic Republic in its entirety. Reform will not suffice. Kasra Arabi from the Tony Blair Institute for Global Change. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. And Iran's men's football team dominated headlines on day two of the Qatar World Cup, not with a score, but with a poignant act of protest against their government. It came before they kicked off their first group match against England. A silence that spoke louder than words as Iran refused to sing their national anthem ahead of kickoff. In the match, they held firm for 35 minutes, but then 19-year-old Jude Bellingham headed in for his first England goal. And the floodgates opened. Bukayo Saka doubled the lead next with a superb strike two minutes before the break. And in injury time, Raheem Sterling added another to make it 3-0 at half-time. 
Saka grabbed a fourth for England in the second half, but Iran got off the mark shortly after in the 65th minute. But hopes of a comeback were dashed as Marcus Rashford added a fifth and Jack Grealish a sixth. A late Iran goal from the penalty spot did little to dampen England's mood or improve that of the Iranian team.